can't ask questions, you can't talk to the staff, you can't talk to the medical doctors, you can't talk to the children. If, if you would like uh, to take pictures, you can't do that, but we'll send pictures to you. This is the kind of uh, media that they had in the former uh, Soviet Union. This is not the kind of uh, unfettered access that we expect in the United States, especially if the president is going to ask us for $2 billion. And now we know it's more than two, it's 3.7 billion. Ryan Liz, I wanted that to be the jumping off point for our discussion. He's a CNN political commentator and a Washington, a Washington correspondent for The New Yorker. So, Ryan Liz, I mean, as we mentioned, that the request now is up to just about $4 billion. And here's this member of Congress in his home yeah. state, wants to go to the center, isn't allowed inside. Uh, that's pretty tough for that member of Congress, I imagine, to say, okay, Mr. President, we'll give you the money. I think so. I think I'd want to know a little bit more about the details of how he uh, made the request to go see him, to see the center. As a reporter who tries to get into an awful lot of places and, and, places and is often denied, denied and tries denied, to talk denied, to politicians right? all the time, I certainly have sympathy for him, uh, although I don't think we've quite uh, reached the, the Soviet Union, as, as he suggested. <laughs> so, you know, that's, he raises an important issue. Congressmen should obviously have access to any federal facility that they, they have to fund. Um, I, you know, we're going to have a big, messy fight here in Washington over this, Brooke. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a big national problem, and the president has now put out uh, a proposal for solving it. They're calling it at the White House a security surge. Hmm. And the next step in this is going to be to hear from John Boehner in the House of Representatives, uh, hear from the Republicans on the Pro Appropriations Committee, and see how they react to this uh, request for an emergency supplemental and see if Washington can actually solve this problem or just get dragged down into right. bickering and, and, and not pass anything. So that's one part of it, right? The, the, the potential bickering in, in Washington, and we've already seen plenty of that as it pertains that's to immigration. That's a given, right? Right, right. We, we know that that will happen. We also know that President Obama is headed to Texas, uh, apparently wanted to initially be greeted by the governor of Texas, Rick Perry, on the tarmac. We know that's not happening. We do now know with this, maybe some of this back and forth, they will be having a meeting, um, you know, reading yeah. into the political tea leaves. What, what of anything, substantive do you think will come out of this face to face I don't know I and mean, there was a lot of silliness in, in terms of right. getting this meeting uh, together right I mean they, they you know Perry felt like he was being slighted because he didn't just want a tarmac handshake finally they're gonna have a real meeting but look, look I think Perry could potentially be uh, an ally to the president on this if Perry you know he's a governor he has a responsible a responsibility that the the republicans in the house of representatives don't all have right he's actually in power charged with uh... with with uh... helping secure that border in some ways and I think what the president's going to want out of this meeting is some sense from Perry that, that the president's emergency supplemental is a good idea or at hmm. least some endorsement of aspects of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's what the White House would want out of this. Now, you know, Perry's always been uh, a little bit more open to uh, the Demo the um, immigration reform ideas, the bipartisan immigration reform ideas. Remember when he ran for president in 2012? Mm -hmm. uh, some of his remarks on immigration got him in trouble with more conservative Republicans. So it'll be interesting to see what he says and if he offers any uh, olive branch to the president's proposal here. What about just quickly, we know that the president's headed to Texas, we know there are fun fundraisers he's planning to attend, no said plans to go to the border with this massive issue front yeah. and center. You know, Josh Earnest, White House spokesperson saying yesterday, we don't care about optics. If you're a betting man, Ryan Lizza, will a president just all of a sudden pop up at the border and we'll be covering it? First of all, the White House always cares about optics. Right. Um, we, we all know that. And, you know, I don't know. It's a little bit awkward. Just the president, this was a prearranged fundraising trip that now comes in the middle of this uh, massive TV story and, and, you know, frankly, national crisis on the border. Uh, so it, it might look bad. On the other hand, you know, for the president of the United States to go visit uh, a border or a uh, border patrol station, it's a big logistical uh, issue, and you'd obviously want to make sure that he's, by his, pre by his mere presence there, he's not going to make things work worse. Um, but maybe they'll squeeze in some kind of opportunity where he'll, he'll get briefed by some agents or, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of, of, of middle ground where it doesn't just seem that he's only going to Texas mm -hmm. uh, to raise money for Democrats, but he's, he's engaged in, the, in, the, in what's going on there. Well, watch for tomorrow. Uh, all of us, Ryan Lizza, thank you so much for joining me Thanks, in Brooke. Washington. Uh,